Well, I want to welcome everyone here today. Glad to have you come out and celebrate uh, the life of Jack. So I want to thank you for coming today to be a support uh, to Sue and the extended family. And not only to be a support to them, but to, we're going to celebrate Jack's life today. We grieve and we feel sad here today. But there is a celebration going on in heaven. Jack made it home. And not only made it home, but able to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. That should be the goal of all of us here today, to hear those words. Uh, we're going to have a short video at the, this time. And, uh, today we're singing about the gospel. Uh, we're singing about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And... Um, it's his love that makes it all possible. Anyhow, this is a song the Lord gave me. It's his love. I tried and I tried to be happy sorrow had filled up my heart then one day i met jesus and i knew what i needed from the start it's his love 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 from above above, above. i will shout it from on high i'll be gone 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 to my home 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 in heaven I was trembling Mercy was flooding my soul Burdens so heavy were lifted His forgiveness made me whole It's his love, love, love From above, above, above I will shout it from on high I'll be gone, gone, gone To my home, home, home In heaven to live when I die Since that day I met the Savior, happiness I find in many ways. When troubles come, I'll be praying, and I'm happy the answer's on the way. It's his love, love, love from above, above, above. I will shout it from on high. I'll be gone, gone, gone to my home, home, home in heaven. I'll be gone yeah. to heaven when I die.
Today as I was walking in a field just down the way I sat down on a fallen log to pass that time away And as I looked around me The more I looked I began to realize That I was viewing God's coloring book I saw a golden ray of sunlight A silver drop of dew Snow white fleecy clouds were floating o'er the sky of blue A yellow dandelion, a pretty evergreen Some red and orange flowers growing wild along the stream And as I looked around me, the more I looked I began to realize that I was viewing God's coloring pool hair the pink in baby's cheeks the dark black in a stormy cloud the brown in fallen leaves they are all around me they're everywhere i look and each new day is but a new page in god's coloring book color gray in old man's hair, the pink in baby cheeks, the dark black in a stormy cloud, the brown in fallen leaves, the multicolored rainbow stretching out across the sky, the purple haze of sunlight just before the night. And as I looked around me, the more I looked, I began to realize that I was viewing God's coloring book. Turned my face toward the sky and said a silent prayer. Thank you, Lord, for beauty. I see it everywhere. It is all around me. It's everywhere I look, and each new day is but a new page in God's coloring book. Take it away, James. Thank you so much. There's so much truth in that song that uh, if we look around us, it doesn't take long. If, uh, if we look hard enough or if we just look and uh, pay attention, there's some beauty in, in everything. And especially in, uh, in uh, you and I, God has created us in his image and uh, there's beauty in every person. And uh, we're thankful for that this afternoon. I do enjoy the, the fall time when the colors come out so beautiful. And this fall, we had an exceptional, beautiful fall with the colors that, uh, and I, it just uh, reminds me of our creator and how, how creative he really is. I mean, it's to the smallest detail, so. This ladder and I'm going home at the top of the ladder. Oh, what joy there shall be! And the angels are holding up this ladder for me. As I climb this gospel ladder, always heeding every sign, I know my Savior's with me and He's teaching me to climb. Every day that I'm climbing, there's a battle for me. Ever step on this ladder is another victory. They're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on. I'm climbing up this ladder and I'm going home at the top of the ladder. Oh, what joy there shall be. And the angels are holding up this ladder for me.
There's a mansion being built for me somewhere in glory land. This ladder that I'm climbing, it's a part of the plan. I can hear the angels beckoning, keep climbing, don't stop. There's a crown of life awaiting for you when you reach the top. They're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on. I'm climbing up this ladder and I'm going home at the top of the ladder. Oh, what joy there shall be. And the angels are holding up this ladder for me. On the door right now. Come on, you Christian soldiers, so the world your light can shine. Get on this gospel ladder, don't be afraid to climb. I can hear the angels cheering, soon this battle will be o'er. We'll celebrate the victory when we reach that other shore. Hallelujah! They're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on. I'm climbing up this ladder and I'm going home at the top of the ladder. Oh, what joy there shall be. And the angels are holding up this ladder for me. What Sit down for a bite and you're wore out You're hardly able to get up from the table Cause you're wore out You crawl into bed Sleep like you're dead Cause you're wore out In the morning you'll wake up But you can't seem to get up Cause you're wore out Well you get up on Sunday You dread to see Monday Cause you're wore out You go sit in the church And your back starts to hurt Cause it's wore out Lordy this thing hurts These are pretty nice seats here, though. The guys start to sing. You can't feel a thing cause you're wore out. Thank you, Rod. You pray the sermon and song won't last too long cause you're wore out. But when we get to heaven with Jesus our King, Ten million years and still fresh as a spring We'll be happy and free Nothing there will ever be Lordy Nothing there will ever be Wore out I took a look out in the parking lot and seen a lot of the cars parked out here. Your car may fit this next verse. You go out for a drive in the car with your wife and it's wore out. 
car? Is the car wore out? The car's wore out. Oh. She starts to worry when you get in a hurry Cause it's wore out. Now slow this thing down. You ever heard that before? You don't know where you're at. The old tire has gone flat and you're wore out. Well, you're at the gospel barn. From the sound of the motor. Is that the way it sounds? You'll soon have to tow her cause it's wore out. But when we get to heaven with Jesus our King, Ten million years and still fresh as a spring, We'll be happy and free, nothing there will ever be. Listen now, nothing... Thank you, Lord. Nothing there will ever be wore out. Aren't you glad? Sing the victory song I've a two-edged sword I will use it for the Lord Get in the glory land Lord, yeah Glory, hallelujah We are marching on As we sing this song And it won't be long The man of Galilee Will set us everyone free So get in
yesterday gone home. They have gone home. Gone, they home. have gone home. The songbirds are singing and they seem to say gone home. Gone home. They've joined the heavenly fold. They're walking on streets of pure gold. They left one by one as the work here was done. Long years have passed since they've gone before, gone home. They have gone home. Gone home. They have gone home. The old weeping willow that hangs by the door sadly sighs. They have gone home. Gone home. They have gone home. They've joined the heavenly fold. They're walking on streets of pure gold. They left one by one. They've joined the heavenly fold. They're walking on streets of pure gold. They left one by one as the work here was done. Gone home. They have gone home. Gone home. Well, get in line, brother, if you want to go For some days coming back again, you know If that wrong ain't right, then you'll be lost in sin Get in line, brother He will take you in Get in line, brother, if you want to go home Get on your knees and write that wrong Then you'll be singing this old time song Get in line, brother If you want to go home Now listen to me say, and I have written that wrong. I've got a one-way ticket and I'm going home. I've got no worries as I sing this song. Get in line, brother, if you want to go home. Get in line, brother, if you want to go home. Get on your knees and write that wrong. Then you'll be singing this old time song. Get in line, sisters, if you want to go home. If I could tell you, brothers, just how it feels, then I'm sure you'd know the love of God is real. Then you'd be praying while I sing this song Get in line, Todd If you want to go home Get in line, brother If you want to go home Get on your knees and write and let wrong Then you'll be singing this old time song Get in line, brother If you want to go home This is called the Glory Bound Special, This Old Train just kind of seems to be picking up speed as we go along the tracks and uh, we keep praying that it doesn't have a train crash because sometimes our uh, train gets a little shaky but uh, 
Jesus is the conductor, and we'll get there safely one way or another. I hope you've got your ticket to ride the Glory Bound Special. on the track Listen yonder come in That glory bound special's coming back Have your ticket and be ready When it leaves here, it won't be bad. Took you right out home, didn't it? Took you right out home. I'd like to read uh, three scriptures this morning. Um, two of them are found in John. 
this here is supposed to be right here in front of me like this? Or this one here? Whichever one you like. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Then Jesus asked a question. And that question, I think, is for us today because he says everyone who believes in him, and it says he who believes in me, so I'm taking it that he's talking about everyone. And the question he asked then, do you believe this? Do you believe that in Christ you will never die? It's a question. Do you believe that? John 14 says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. Jack would say, mansions for him. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And then Revelation 21 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among those. And they, say, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any pain or crying. The first things have passed over. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come to us in a fresh and powerful way this morning to bring comfort to all who is listening, those that are here. We thank you for the wonderful plan of salvation which provides both forgiveness and new life. We thank you for the life of Jack and his acceptance of this wonderful plan of salvation. I ask, Jesus, that you provide your peace through this time of mourning, and I pray your blessings will be with Amanda, the singers, and Clint. For it is in your glorious name that I ask these things. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to use my stalker Schwartz voice like Tom, but we'll see. We'll see how I can, how loud I can be. Um, I wrote some eulogy stuff to go with the obituary and some memories, so it's kind of eulogies. I don't know if that's a word or not, but I'm going to go with that. Um, on November 16th, 2021, Jack A. Stalker, with family by his bedside, went to be with his Lord and Savior. He passed away after a short illness at Select Specialty Hospital in Battle Creek, Michigan. Jack got his ticket that Jesus paid for. He was ready to go. And on this past Tuesday, he rode at Glory Bond Special to his eternal home. Jack was born November 7, 1952 in Service, Michigan, a son of Roy Freeman, Sonny, and Barbara Schwartz Stopper. That's my brother, please, in here. 
He graduated from Centerville High School in 1970. His fellow seniors voted him as the class clown, a characteristic that never left him. After graduation, Jack entered Mennonite voluntary service, serving for two years at Frontier Boys Village in Larkspur, Colorado. When he returned, he worked for Peter M. Schwartz Construction. He worked for an irrigation systems company and Vanguard. Jack also worked for Charles Nightingale, learning to service furnaces and air conditioners. And in 1983, he started Magic City Heating and Cooling and ran that business until he retired just a few years ago. He was truly a jack of all trades, able to fix just about anything. On June 18, 1976, he married a beautiful Christian woman, Susan K. Simpson Stoffer, at Factoryville Bible Church. They lived to life together at the current address for the past 45 years. He was a founding member of Word Fellowship here, where the name changed to Bridges Community Church. At age 14, Dad taught himself how to play the banjo that he found in his grandma Stoffer's attic. He became one of the original members of the Wasipi Bluegrass Gospel Singers, whose ministry has stretched across many states and has continued for 47 years. In recent years, the Wasipis and Friends focused on singing at nursing homes across the tri-state and the tri-county area. Uh, Jack was very musically talented and he had a gift to ministering to others, especially as they faced their own deaths. He now joins these past members of the music group in heaven, Homer McGowan, Rod Zare, Donnie Stopper, Sonny Stopper, Aaron Cowles, Joe Metzger, Jake Schwartz, and Eli Schwartz. Jack and Sue love to travel together by motorcycle, plane, boat, truck, bus, train, wherever, whenever, as long as they were traveling together. With some company perks, they were able to take several trips to places like Jamaica, Mexico, the Bahamas, Hawaii, without their wonderful daughters, of course. <laughs> but they did take their girls on many, many fun trips through Michigan, camping trips, and across most of the United States for all of our growing up years, and even after. Finding dinosaur bones in South Dakota, hiking through virgin forests, prairie dog hunting, going up north every year with the Stopper family, Pikes Peak on the West of bus almost every weekend, the mystery spot, the golf, and so many more places. If there was a tourist trap, my dad would surely stop. <laughs> Jack was very adventurous. Perhaps, I think Pastor Tom might share about the couple's motorcycle trip that they took up to Maine. Great times, right Tom? <laughs> Fun memories. Jack loved his grandchildren and any time spent with his family. If there wasn't a reunion, a holiday, or a birthday to celebrate, he'd make up a reason to get together and grow out. Sometimes the meat was a little overdone, AKA just right to them, as he got distracted by the conversation or Detroit Tigers baseball game. He provided endless amounts of M&Ms, hence the ones in his pocket, and snacks to the people that entered his home. He made sure to have fun toys that he and the grandkids could equally enjoy, like four-wheelers, a slew of sleds, mini bikes, a trampoline, video game consoles, RC trucks, and an endless bucket of batteries of all sizes. Kites, a drone, instruments, the latest gadgets, everything they could have fun with. He was a lot like his father in that way. He geocached all weekend sometimes, pulling sleds behind the four-wheeler, making huge piles of snow with the big tractor. Three Stooges episodes every time we're there. Forts with hay bales, spoiling us all at the, at the county jail. The county jail, county fair. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Christmas lights. Movie marathons with snacks and meals provided for the whole thing. He found pleasure in all of these times that I mentioned, but just hearing the laughter of his loved ones around him brought him so much joy. In earlier years, he was an avid fisherman and hunter, going on Canadian fishing trips and Colorado elk hunts with friends and family. He played slow pitch softball here at the church for many years and for South Poland. He enjoyed tractoring, gardening, gardening, harvesting, and eating a fresh radish or tomato right out of the garden. He created a lot of great memories for those in his life. He also accomplished a lot of great milestones. But the best thing that happened to my dad was when he accepted God's gift of salvation. He was not ashamed of the gospel that changed his life. He tried to live it out through service, hospitality, encouragement, generosity, kindness toward others. He showed God's grace to so many folks over the years. And each one of you are probably here because of that one or more of these godly characteristics that you saw in my dad. We all mourn my dad's death, but we all hold on to these truths, that God is still God, 
and God is still good. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return, and the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing, 2 Timothy 4, 7, 8. That's for all of us who believe. It's hard for me to think of my dad running a race because he wasn't a runner. But if I can, uh, if you know baseball, you know that the fourth hitter is usually the power hitter. And that's where they put my dad because he wasn't a speed guy. He just would power hit and then he could just jog around the bases. But uh, it's, it's hard for me to think of dad as a runner. But I think of him riding in a train. And I think of a train with wobbly, wobbly wheels. We all have those moments of wobbly wheels and wobbly tracks. But he would ride those tracks with God. He made it up there. He got the prize of eternal life. Jack is survived by his wife, Susan Stoffer of Centerville, four daughters, Stephanie, Raymond Schwartz of Centerville, Amanda, Robert Grove of Sturgis, Julie Stoffer, David King of Columbia, Missouri, and Autumn Stoffer of Centerville, Michigan. Grandchildren, Thomas, Joseph, Joshua, Philip, Stephen, Naomi, Elizabeth, Jonathan, Rachel, and Rebecca. Mother, Barbara Stoffer of Three Rivers, Michigan. Two sisters, Gloria Charles Palmer of Centerville and Sherry Lee Carr of Nava. Brother Russ, Melissa Stoffer of Centerville and many nieces and nephews. He was preceded in death by his father, Roy Freeman Sonny Stoffer. Jack's family received friends and family on Monday, November 22nd, 2021 from 10 a.m. to noon at Bridges Community Church, 27570 Martin Road, Centerville, Michigan, 49032. Funeral services began at noon with Pastors Tom Schwartz and Clint Zara officiating. The burial will follow at Nadawa Cemetery. If desired, memorials may be made to the family. Envelopes will be available at the church the day of the funeral and at Skipper Funeral Home in Cohen. I know that two hours is too short to visit with everybody here um, during that viewing, but we haven't had a chance to visit with all of you. Please, whatever memories you have of my dad, we'd still love to hear them. Send a text, send a card, stop in, call, whatever. Um, get with one of us girls or mom and tell us what Jack meant to you. We love each and every one of you, and he did too. All of us have had the pleasure of being able to, to play with Jack and hear what Jack had to say about Jesus Christ. And um, we are planning on continuing to tell the story of our God, of our Lord and Savior, and praise His name through song.
longing for you. And someday on the outstanding
uh, some family members uh, share uh, some stories, some accounts. Uh, but I do want to start uh, with one story that uh, uh, Sue knows about. Um, the rest of you don't, probably. But uh, uh, I've taken several trips with Jack. Um, we flew into Canada, uh, supposed to be going fishing. Uh, and we was in Alaska. Uh, we was out to Colorado three different times. Uh, I'm supposed to be elk hunting. Uh, and then uh, also uh, we were, took a motorcycle trip to uh, out east. And this is one of the stories I want to talk about uh, with Jack. It's still a vivid memory with me. Uh, we were out to Bar Harbor, Maine. It was five, five, uh, five bikes was out, ten of us. And uh, one of our goals was to eat some uh, fresh lobster. And uh, we heard that there was really a good place to eat. Uh, it was kind of fancy, uh, which didn't fit us very well. But uh, we were all dressed in, uh, you know, uh, motorcycling. And so we walked into this restaurant, um, this uh, served... Uh, uh, well, they served all kinds of meals, but uh, we wanted lobster. And they took a look at us, you know, there was ten of us, uh, and uh, they put us back in, uh, kind of off to the side. They didn't really want us out in front of everybody. Well, um, anyways, we, uh, we, you know, uh, with the group that uh, we were with, uh, and uh, uh, the one couple you didn't know, but there was... Uh, Jack and Sue, my wife and I, and then uh, Rich and Rod. Okay, so you know that uh, we weren't going to be quiet. And so uh, we were having a good time eating back there. And uh, Jack, bless his heart, Jack uh, had lobsters on each ear, <laughs> he had it on his nose, and had one sitting on his head. And the waitress happened to come through there at that time. And lo and behold, they asked us to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and and there was, you know, we, were, we hadn't really got to eat the lobster. Jack had most of them on him. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I says, you got to be kidding. We are not kidding. And they went and got some guys to come out there and to escort us out. And thank the Lord we didn't have to pay for anything. We didn't eat anything. But here we are. We just got into the place. And we had, we had some of the lobster when we had started to eat. And uh, I don't know why Jack messed it up. But <laughs> anyways, we didn't get any lobster that night to eat. And I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> he messed us up. But Gloria say he messed the whole meal up. Uh, okay, at this time, uh, Gloria is going to uh, share some words with us. And we're going to have to do it here and loud, okay? So I didn't have a problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a problem. That doesn't work. <laughs> the mic up there doesn't work, right? I don't hear it. That does. The one that's laying up there? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't need a problem. Oh, okay. Well, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Jack's smile. Now, if you... I've noticed this picture back here. You see Jack's smile on that picture. That speaks Jack to me. Yeah. Jack, he always sat in the back. He was never loud like Sherry and I, but always just sort of quiet, but mischievous. Always mischievous. He was the one that never did anything. And Sherry and I got the blank. <laughs> Such as... One day when we were little, we were playing outside on the road. Mom told us, don't play on the road. Jack probably led us out there. <laughs> and uh, we were playing on the road, and Mom come out the front door, and she said, all right, you kids are going to get a spanking. And she called us up there, one by one. Get up here, 
lean over my knees, and you're going to get a spanking. Now, that's the only spanking I ever remember getting. But I was in tears, and Sherry was in tears, and we went up, and we took our spanking two or three slots on the beehive, and Jack stood up. <laughs> and then she said, Jack, get up here, it's your turn. And he just stood there and smiled at her. <laughs> he wouldn't come. Finally, Mom got up and went to get him, and he backed up. And then he began to run away. And Mom chased after. <laughs> Round the house they went. <laughs> Mom ended up laughing so hard she fell over in the grass, and Jack got away. <laughs> that was my brother. Yeah, he would love to tease Sherry. I was supposed to, I was the oldest, so I was supposed to be taking care of these kids. And he'd be in the background, just egging her on. Like the time they were going to fry eggs. Sherry said, you're not going to put your egg in my pan. Yes, I am, he said. So she said, well, you better not get any pepper on my egg. So when she wasn't looking, he peppered it black. <laughs> And of course, then she cried, and she was mad, and she got revenge on him. She went and found some... No. <laughs> some of her own vegetables that had been worn well, and put them on his pillow. Under his pillow. Under his pillow. Well, he got back at her, he went out and got some dog doo-doo, oh. put it on her pillow, and so it went. Oh. Tease, tease, tease. Jack would just tease all the time. And then he'd sit back. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> just smile all the time. He smiled when he was mischievous, but he smiled when he was contented. When we'd get together in family groups, you wouldn't hear Jack unless you heard his guitar or whatever. He'd be in the background, just smiling. He loved it when we'd get together as family. When we were sitting with Russ on his pontoon, the siblings and mom, and we'd go for a ride. Never heard too much from Jack, he'd just sit there and smile. He loved that kind of thing. He loved being together with kids. Oh my goodness, he loved kids. And when we'd get together for family outings, where would Jack be? Would he be with us laughing and carrying on and making fools of ourselves? No, he'd be out on the four-wheeler or the tractor or something getting all these kids rides. They'd be hanging off in every corner. And he'd take them around. Or if we were at a lake, he'd have them out with the boat. He just loved doing things for kids. And Jack would smile. These last four years, Charlie and I have got to travel with the Wasippies um, doing their nursing home ministries. And every time Jack would start that service, he'd start with, I'm so privileged to be here today with you. And he'd give him a smile. He loved serving. He loved being with uh, people that were in need and meeting those needs. And he smiled when he was peaceful. Like when Dad died. You saw him there in that picture with Dad when he was very, very ill. Jack and Russ and I were there when Dad took off for glory, and he smiled. He was very happy. We're happy for Jack today, but I'll miss that smile. I will. Sure. Jack was my older brother by four years, for three and a half years. 
Um, I would say he was a hero of mine growing up. Teased me like crazy, but there's just not going to be another Jack. He's just one of a kind. I would say, you know, our family did not live for the Lord when, when I was growing up. Right, Mom? And I would say Jack was instrumental in leading our family to the Lord. He was the one that brought us together to know about the Lord. I can remember this memory in my mind. I, Leah and I were married. We, I was in the hospital for a minor surgery. And Jack and Sue, I don't know if Sue was with him or not, but Jack came up, you know, and he sat there and talked to me. And he said, you know, I, we prayed for you last night at church. And that memory, like sticks out in my mind all the time because I thought, somebody's praying for me? Like, really? I mean, I didn't even... Jack was praying for me. You know, like, that touched me so much at that time. I think that was part of why I came to the Lord. Because I just knew, you know, somebody was praying for me. And... Um, I'd say he was the leader of our family. When we went somewhere, he silently led the whole thing, you know? He somehow didn't say a word, but had his way. Oh. And he was always late. <laughs> always late, and I don't know why he got to go first. <laughs> like, how did that happen? He was always lagging behind. Another memory of mine is when we were young, he was chubby believe it or not. Uh, and he, we was on the railroad tracks with a bunch of kids, and Jack, my older brother, was lagging way behind because he was slow. And I felt so sorry for him. You know, I went back and helped him and talked to him. And he was my hero, you know? He really was. Um, but he was so aggravating to me. <laughs> when, when our kids had birthdays, what did they get? Pounds of m &Ms. <laughs> Thank you, Jack, for doing that, you know? It was like, please, stop, you know? I have so many memories of Jack, but my last memory of Jack was in Three Rivers Hospital. He had just went in with COVID, and I stood outside his window, me and Amanda and her boys, and... We couldn't talk because there's a window there. But I took paper and I took a marker. And I wrote him some verses. And I said, you can do this, Jack. And I wrote him some verses. And he said, yes, yes, I can. And I, and I said, you know, I love you. And he mouthed back that he loved us. I blew him a kiss. And he blew me a kiss back. And that was the last time I saw my brother. But I know, I have no doubt where he's at. No doubt where he's at. He was the first to lead us to the Lord, and he's the first of our siblings to go home. But I know he's there playing bluegrass music now. Yeah. One thing about Jack, he was favored above all of us, because <laughs> when he played the banjo, like, the whole house revolved around Jack. When I played the clarinet, I got back to the basement. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Yes, I did, Mom. Yes, I did. I got sent to the basement, and my career of being a clarinet player never went anywhere. But I didn't have the support. <laughs> Jack, every morning, would play the same tune over and over, and I was like, oh, my word, bluegrass music. But I have a heart for bluegrass music today. I love bluegrass music. Um, I love music in general. But, so I'm, I'm looking forward to some heavenly music when we all are getting there. We're all getting there, you know. But I thank you all for coming.
Is it on? Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm Jeff Fulton's daughter, Stephanie. Um, this past year and a half has been very hard. And um, my husband and I were very um, privileged to be able to live next door to my dad for a year. And I got to spend more time with him than I ever have. And I will cherish those memories forever. And um, there's just so many memories, just even around here, fishing at the pond right over there, um, shooting targets in the field here. Um, Sledding in the hills back here. Dad always was doing stuff with us. He always um, was asking us to do stuff. Hey, you want to come over for a barbecue? Hey, let's go out in the boat. Hey, let's, let's come on, we'll go to Kalamazoo. You know, he loved, loved spending time with family. And that's something that I'm very thankful for. Um, yeah. I thank you for coming. <laughs> um, I just have to say that God has orchestrated all of this. No, we don't want to have gone. But you know, Dad, Dad was in the hospital where he couldn't have visitors because of the COVID and being in quarantine. That was hard for us not to visit somebody in, in the hospital. I know Thousands of people across the country, across the country, have dealt with that. But um, they they put a trach in Dad. They got him out of quarantine. They, Mom was able to go up and be the only one that could go see them the entire time that he was in the hospital. So that was really difficult for Mom to be it, going to work and then going to do that all the time. Um, so once they moved him to the uh, rehab center, he could have two visitors at a time all day long. Everybody could switch whoever wanted to go. And so that was. That was amazing to be able to go see Dad. I mean, I did go with Sherry over three years, and we talked through the window and love you and said our goodbyes in case that was the last time. But I got to see him again, and I got to be with him. I got to do the talking. <laughs> he couldn't talk or the trade in at all, so he just had to listen. And I said, you know, I told him everything. I told him the Braves won the World Series. I told him anything I could think of that I wanted to share with my dad. I got to say it. And he had to listen. <laughs> So that was a pretty special time. But um, he would mouth things, and, and I could read some of his stuff. Some of it I have videos of, and maybe someday I'll understand what he was trying to say. Um, but just taking care of my dad to the very end and helping whatever he needed, which at the end it was just, he just wanted a cold washcloth, and it was never cold enough. And so I was always constantly getting these cold washcloths for his head. And that's all he wanted. So I just both cold washcloths, and I talked. And he had to listen. I just loved that part of it. I always listened to Dad talk up on stage. I always got to hear him share. But that time I just got to bear my heart to my dad. And that was a pretty special moment. So again, thank you all for coming. This has been a wonderful celebration of my dad's life. Barbara? Uh, Uncle Jack, just the, just the phrase makes you smile. He always loved us girls and Josiah. We just loved spending time with him. He was always so much fun. I mean, he just, he was full of the love of Christ. You could just feel it. And that's part of our heritage. And I'm so grateful. Um, you know, we, we kind of do whatever we want here on this road. We ride our four-wheelers, we take walks, I ride a horse, and um, oftentimes, going by Jack's house, you can hear him. Sitting on the porch with Sue or Autumn, playing his banjo, just, just the symphony, just constantly lifting up praise to the Lord. I feel that he just 
a sweet smelling aroma that the Lord talks about of praise just just was constantly lifting from Jack and um, emanating from him. Those were fond memories. And, um, my last memory of Jack was really special to me. Uh, it was earlier this summer, a nice day, and we had just poured concrete in our barn. So he brought Grandma up on the four-wheeler to come visit, to come see our new concrete. It was the simple things like that. And my daughter and I were out there, and just a few minutes before he pulled in the drive, um, Selah, she's five, she wanted me to, she's, you know, writing chalk all over the cement, and she said, Mom, I want you to write something. And he held that chalk, and I took a deep breath, and I closed my eyes, and I, right across the whole doorway of the barn, I wrote, in big letters, I wrote, Hope. And we, we decorated it, and we played, and, and within minutes, here comes Jack and Grandma. And he pulls right up to that step, and, and she hands him a piece of chalk. She says, you write something. And he took his hand, and he put it right down there on that hope. And he traced his hand out. And he called Sayla over, and he put her hand right next to his, and he traced her hand. And I just stood back and took a picture with my mind. To me, it's Jack's last message to us, to me, is hope. Hannah? So much fun, and uh, the three stooges were our favorites. And he got us kids hooked to the point where we had to take more from just that it kept hitting us. <laughs> um, and all growing up, I remember Jack talking about, "Oh, she had a stooge on and watched the three stooges all night long." And I thought that sounded like so much fun. And um, right before I went to Guatemala, I guess he realized that we were growing up, and he had us over for a stooge on and. I think uh, he could have kept going a lot longer than us kids who we were way tired. <laughs> but it was awesome, and that's, that's how Jack was. He was um, kind and so much fun. And I, uh, I do just recall a lot of memories of sitting in the backyard, uh, as the sun's going down, and listening to his banjo playing down the road. And I thought this must be what paradise is like. And uh, I know it doesn't even compare to what Jack is. Boy, have I had a pleasure being with my friend and brother Jack. Uh, one of the last new members to the to the group. Um, they found me alongside the road. <clears throat> They came screeching up along in the bus, and tires were smoking and everything, and all of a sudden this little round guy gets out of the bus and says, Son, you know how to play bass? I said, Well, yeah, get on the bus. <laughs> okay, that's a joke. I mean, <clears throat> one thing... <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to, didn't want to play bass. One thing that isn't a joke is, is Jack's heart for the Lord. Uh, I was blessed to be able to go to Eli's funeral also and, and spoke about what Eli would say. And Jack was just as, just as staunch a Christian Um, he had no problem saying that he messed up. 
and I respect that man for that. I probably got more respect for him than I do for anybody else. It is a loss. You know, in a crowd this size, you can all think that, well, I go to church. I, I, I know Jesus. Well, so does Satan. Think about that. Think about that. Satan knows Jesus too, but he can't say he is my rock. And Jack could. He can't say he is my fortress, but Jack could. And right now he's with that fortress. There's a song that Johnny Cash did, Jack and uh, Johnny and June did, uh, on the other side of Jordan. I'm not going to say it because there'd be a puddle in the peak. But he's going to be waiting on the other side, drawing pictures in the sand, waiting for Sue. And the rest of his family. Will you be a part? Will he be waiting for you? If you're going, he'll be waiting. I got to know Jack in the early 2000s when he uh, brought me out as the sound guy for the Lost Cities. He always called me the techno nobulator. And uh, we became such good friends. But the one thing I learned from Jack was commitment and dedication. We, we spent a lot of June summer days down in Bean Blossom at the Bluegrass Festival. But Jack's number one commitment was always to the band. I'll never forget the summer we went down there, but we drove three and a half hours back up to Wakarusa because we had a program that week and he wasn't going to miss it. And then we drove back again that night. It was a long day, but we did it. And then one summer, he spent most of the time at Bean Blossom sitting on his picnic table and by his camper because he had a mix and, and, and uh, edit the new album that we had just done in the, in the studio. And um, but probably the most biggest commitment that I can remember was the day we were in this room and held the celebration for Sonny. And that afternoon, we got on the bus and went to Indiana and did a program that same night. Now, that's, that's a dedication. But Jack was even more dedicated to the Lord. Jim and I and Jack, um, we, uh, when the restrictions came in and we couldn't go out anymore, we, we started doing a Bible study together on Tuesday mornings via video. We learned so much. The good Lord gave us a special, special type of unit. And the one thing we learned that I'll never forget, we talked about this one day, you know, Eternal life didn't start for Jack last week when he made the transition. Eternal life starts the moment you turn your life over to Jesus. And that was what Jack, that was his main purpose in all of what the lost cities ever did, was to make sure that everybody that we 
ministered to knew that they that Jesus was the reason, and as soon as you commit to Jesus, your eternal life starts right then. Now he made the transition, and if he could be here right now, he would say, Don't cry for me. I'm I made it. Cry for the people out there who don't know Jesus. And that was his commitment to make sure that everybody that we met and everybody we talked to. And if there's anybody here that hasn't made that commitment to Jesus, please, go and see me. I'll pray with you afterwards. Jack. He was such a good friend. And I know I'll see him on the other side. I want to tell one final story that uh, then Clint's going to come and share with us. This was our first trip to, to Colorado, and we did take the bus. And we crossed some bridges and stuff that we didn't know was going to make it over them with that big bus. But um, we got back to where we were going to meet the outfitter, and there was horses there. And both, this, uh, it was Jack and um, Sonny and Rich Zitter and myself, and there was a couple others. And they seen those horses and they said, what's those horses for? Well, we got to ride them back to where we're going. And uh, of course, Jack says, give me the tamest one. And Rich says, no, I want the tamest one. And well, we finally made it back to camp. We were back there five or six days, I don't remember how long. And uh, the last the last day um, for supper, uh, it was Jack and Rich putting together the supper. And um, we just kind of shook our heads with the smell that was coming from it. And um, we said, uh, Sonny went up to him and said, what are you guys doing? Well, we're fixing supper. Well, it sure don't smell like supper. And uh, Jack was there, they were steering stuff up. And anyways, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, nobody wanted to take the first bite. And Jack says, well, I'll eat it. And so he gets uh, put some stuff on his plate, whatever it was, and he starts eating it. And pretty soon, ooh, ooh. Nobody had supper that night. <laughs> Jack messed up again. <laughs> well, in memory of Jack, <laughs> I remember going and watching the Three Stooges myself. I have uh, plenty of good memories that. Uh, I'm not going to share them all, but I do remember going up north on Memorial Day weekend. Jack always had the deep fryer. And we'd have deep fried chicken nuggets, and we'd have deep fried onions, and we'd have deep fried mushrooms, and whatever else he found at Sam's Club the week before. <laughs> I remember many years ago uh, going to Cincinnati, Ohio, to make the very first recording of the Wasip and Bluegrass Gospel Series. Uh, Bob was my uncle. Sonny and Jack, and at that time, most were family. And I remember going as a little kid, and going in the studio, and my eyes were about that big, and uh, staying in the hotel overnight, because they couldn't get it right the first time. They had to do it again. <laughs> I remember going to Talcum, Kentucky, the old school bus. I mean, school bus. They would barely make those hairpin turns and up and down the mountains, but. Uh, I remember going there for revival meetings. I remember many trips to the Gospel Barn in Hillsdale. 
I was probably like the first roadie or the first groupie of the Lost Sippies if they ever had. Uh, my cousin Randy and I, who's not here recovering from surgery, we used to go with him a lot. Of course, Donnie was the fiddle player. That's Randy's father. We were mostly just looking for girls, but we were on the bus anyway. It was, it was a good time. But Jack played the banjo for the glory of God. That's why he played the banjo. He played in churches, in jails, in nursing homes, in churches, wherever he was invited, uh, he would go. They would go. The Washippies would go. Jack did many other things for the glory of God, not just playing the banjo. You've heard a lot of them this morning. The bottom line is that Jack lived his life for Jesus. Amen. That was his purpose. When he came back from Colorado, I remember the transition. You see, I didn't have any brothers or sisters. I, I was an only child. And, and my dad, and my dad was rich, and, and Sonny were, were hunting buddies, and they hunted together all the time. And so my family, the only brothers and sisters I really ever had were Jack and Gloria and Sherry and Russ. That's, that, that was my family. That was my brothers and sisters. And, and it wasn't like we lived in the same house, uh, but they were as close to a family as I ever had. And so, so I, I enjoyed the, the family time when we'd get together. And I know, uh, I remember the transition when Jack came back from Colorado and, and the family began to change. Instead of having... Uh, playing music and drinking beer down at the Ponderosa, things began to change. And aren't we glad they did change? Come on, come on. Hallelujah. God is good. He's faithful. And I'm so thankful for that transition, that, that change. Now, Jack was not a perfect man. He made mistakes. The rest of us make mistakes. Somebody say amen. We make mistakes. But Jack had repented of those mistakes and and sought the forgiveness of God and did a lot of good things in his life for God. But today, that life is over. And we are here and we are reminded, we've laughed, we've, we've had joy here today and that's all well and good and should be like that. But we're all reminded of how precious the gift of life is and how soon it comes to an end sometimes. Jack was 69 years old. Psalm 144, 4 says, man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. Here today, gone tomorrow. But I have good news today. You want some good news? Come on, church. I'm going to tell you some things this morning for just a few minutes that we've already been said in one way or another, but I'm going to encapsulate them in this little thing we call a sermon, or today it's a sermonette, okay? The good news is God never meant for us to live here on earth for 60 or 70 or even 80 years, and that's it. Kaput. The end. You've done your thing. It's over. That was never God's intention. God wants each and every one of us here this morning, today, this afternoon, probably by right now it is. He wants each and every one of us to spend eternity with him. That's his plan. That's what he wants. And he made a way for that to happen, and you probably, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. Okay. Most of you already know that. But the fact of the matter is, he said, I'm going away. When Jesus left, he said, I'm going away. And I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. He wants us there. And although today is a sad day for us, we do mourn. I believe today Jack is rejoicing Amen. because he's in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The matter of, the matter of fact, the the deal is, for a Christian, when a Christian dies, it's always bittersweet. Always bittersweet. It's bitter for those of us who remain. But oh, how sweet it is for Jack. To be in the presence of the Lord, to be absent from this body, the Bible says, is to be present with the Lord. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know exactly where he is, what that is, but I know that he's present with the Lord. And you can't be in a better place, church. Okay? You, you can't be in a better place. The fact of the matter is hope. Who mentioned hope? In Jesus Christ, we have hope. The Bible says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy gives us hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have hope of eternal life because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. 
Okay? Referring to his own resurrection in John 14, he said, Because I live, you shall also live, or you shall live also. He overcame death. And so can we. And so will we if we know Christ as our Savior. It was only a few chapters earlier Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Tom uh, quoted this at the beginning of our service. I am the resurrection, Jesus said. And the life, and he who believes in me, though he may die physically, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. See, Jack was not ashamed of his faith in Christ, and that's been mentioned before. The fact that he had trusted Christ for salvation was a very well-known fact. And last Tuesday, while I was sitting in my hunting blind, I got a text saying Jack had died. And I know that today, Jack is very much alive. Physically, he died, yes. But he is so very alive today. Billy Graham said, would say he only changed addresses. He used to live on Marvin Road, Centerville, Michigan. Today he lives in the presence of Almighty God. Woo! Yeah. What a switch. What a change for the better. He graduated into eternity because of the hope that is in the resurrection of Christ. And the hope, I want to say something about the hope. The hope that we have in that is not like I hope the weather is good today. I hope that the Tigers win the ball game. We don't cross our fingers and hope, oh, I hope I get to heaven. No, 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 no. It's a different kind of hope. The Bible says this in Romans, God gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they already did. <laughs> Look at that for a minute. Yeah. The hope of the resurrection is a certainty. It is a confident expectation because it is Jesus Christ, the infallible one, the one who does not and cannot lie, the true one. It is him, God's only son, who is our hope. Amen. It's different than I hope the title. Are you with me, church? Yes. And God's word says if we will put our faith and our trust in him to save us, he will do that. Jack had done that. Jack had trusted Jesus Christ to forgive his sin and to give him eternal life. <coughs> Folks, we're all saved by God's grace. Amen. It's nothing we can do. You can't hurt your way there. It's God. It's Jesus. He is our only hope. Amen. And because he shed his blood, because he died in our place on the cross, you and I can have hope. And that hope is certain. That hope is certain. While we are here in this body, we are absent from the Lord. And sometimes it gets pretty lonely. We're absent from the Lord. So the Bible says we walk by faith. That's what we're doing today. We're walking by faith. We're believing. We're not walking by sight. But for Jack, who's in the presence of God, his faith has become sight. His faith has become a reality. And Jack today is rejoicing. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what state he's in, but he was present with the Lord. His soul and his spirit, which is the real Jack, is with Jesus. Now, the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes says that God has made everything beautiful in its time, and he has put eternity in our hearts because we were made not to live just for a few years, but forever with God. He's put eternity in our hearts. Furthermore, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. How are you looking at this situation? See, we see it from this side. But the Bible says in the sight of God, this situation, the death of his saints, is a precious thing. It's a precious thing. A Christian's death looks so much different to God than it does to us. So today... We sorrow. We, we, we shed tears. We cry. But not as those who have no hope. The Bible says, but not as those who have no hope, church. Jack has finished his earthly race, and he did it having faith in Jesus Christ to save him. 
I need to ask you a question. He's already asked. How about you? How about us? The Bible says it is appointed every to every one of us to die and then to face judgment. Every one of us. We can't escape it. It's an appointment we have to keep. We can't change it like we change a dentist appointment. We can't change it like we change an appointment to get our hair done. It's appointed unto each of us once to die. And then we will all stand before God. Are you ready? Do you know Christ as your Savior? Now, let me be very specific. I did not ask you if you went to church. Two weeks ago on a Sunday morning, I was preaching about grace. And I gave an altar call. <clears throat> Two young ladies who, not, not children, two young ladies who've been in church most of their lives came forward and received Christ. They've gone to church. They were saved. They didn't know Jesus as their Savior. They never established a relationship with Him, asking for forgiveness. So I'm not asking you if you go to church. I didn't ask you if you've been baptized. You know that getting baptized without faith in Jesus Christ will only get you wet? That's all it gets you. Just wet. That's to happen. I didn't even ask you if you were raised in a Christian home. I thank God, many of you thank God, that that is the case in your life. But that alone, being raised in a Christian home alone, will not get you to heaven. You won't go to heaven just because your daddy did just because your mama did. Mm -hmm. You need to know Jesus as your Savior. So are you saved? Do you know where you'll spend eternity? You can. You can know that. And I'm going to read something to you that proves it. First John chapter 5, the Bible says, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. It's Jesus. He who does not have the Son you don't have Jesus. He who has the Son has eternal life. He who does not have the Son does not have eternal life. How much simpler can it be? How much plainer can it get? He goes on to say, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know. You got a Bible at home? Look it up. 1 John 5, 13. So that you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the Son of God. You can know with assurance today that you have eternal life. You can know with assurance like Jack did today that when you leave this room, you're born again. The Bible calls it born again. Your spirit gets born again. You establish a relationship with Jesus. Receive him as your Savior. You can have that confident hope, that expectation today. You can have it. You can know it. I pray that you do. If you do not, I pray that you will talk to somebody, me or Tim or anybody, Pastor Tom, sometime today. We're not Jesus, <laughs> but we can lead you to him. Because we know him. He's our friend. He's our Savior. Amen? Amen. Sue said, I want a salvation message. I said, I'll do my best. <laughs> salvation is so simple. For something so grand, so glorious, so wonderful, it's so simple. It's we as humans that mess it up. Oh, there's got to be more to it than that. I need Jesus and. I need Jesus and this and that. No, you don't. You need Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of your sins because if he died because he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, and he says, I'll forgive you, and you can be saved, you can come live with me forever. That's it. That's it, church. It's a gift. The Bible says it's by grace that we are saved through faith. It is the gift of God. So that none of us can boast about it. Oh, I got saved because I did this. Oh no, you didn't. I have every, there's not a doubt 
in my body today. Jack, where Jack is, I know where he is. He is with the Lord. His body's here. We're going to bury it in the ground. It's going to decay. But the real Jack, <laughs> the one we all loved, is with the Lord. And someday, I'm going to be there with him. Someday. Let's pray, and then we'll ask Mr. Stanley to come in. Father, we thank you for a life well lived. We thank you for Jack and the example that he set. Lord, he, he made mistakes. We know that. He, know, he knew that. You know that. We all make mistakes. We all mess up. If it wasn't for the fact that we messed up, we wouldn't need a Savior. But God, we need Jesus so bad. It is because of what he has done for us and not anything that we have done for ourselves. Only through that act of dying on the cross and raising from the dead that we can be saved. God, because of your grace, because of your divine enablement toward us, your love, and we thank you for that salvation. I pray, Heavenly Father, right now for anyone in this room who does not know that they are saved. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would bug them and bug them and bug them and not let them go until they come to the point where they receive you. God, minister as only your Holy Spirit can do in love and by your grace. We thank you. We bless you. And we honor you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. pray. Father, we thank you for this day of celebration. We thank you for the life of Jack. And we pray, Father, as Brother Clint talked about, that we want to make sure that we're ready to go. And we thank you for that invitation. And Lord, as we, as we uh, gather together here, we ask a blessing upon the food that will be served. We ask that you would just bless it, that it might nourish our bodies and give us strength. Bless the hands that have prepared it. And most of all, we ask that you bless the fellowship around the table today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.